so today i'll be talking about the new education policy and i was discussing all these things so that you can have uh, the, your pen and paper ready with you so i i'll only be discussing the important points of uh, new education policy 2020 it was approved by the union cabinet of india on 29th of july 2020 the date is important on which date the new education policy is approved by the union cabinet 29th of july 2020 and it has replaced the old policy of 1986 till now we have been following the old education policy of 1986 these two points are very important the main aim of the new education policy is to build up the framework for elementary education as well as higher education for vocational training in rural india as well as urban india so vocational training vocational courses have been more emphasized in the new education policy this is a very important point uh, that might be asked in the exam the policy aims to transform india's education system by 2030 so they may ask a question what is the main aim of the new education policy till what year they have planned to reform the indian education system so you must note down by 2030 the policy aims to transform the indian education system this is a very important point according to the new education policy and no student will be forced to study any particular language or any particular course mostly the medium of instruction will be in the regional languages so uh, according to the new education policy the language policy is left in the hand of the states or the institutions or the school to decide which language is to be implemented in their school so this new education policy is also known as concurrent policy what is not concurrent policy because uh, state government as well as union uh, i mean central government both are concurrently responsible for implementation of the rules and regulations in the education system that is the reason this policy is also known as concurrent policy so here you can see that the states institutions and schools are given power to decide the implementation of languages for the medium of instruction so uh, this time the main focus is on the concurrent list of the education system this concurrent list was uh, introduced in the constitution of india and the seventh schedule in which there are 52 items and one among them is education also so education falls in the concurrent list of the constitution of india in uh, if i talk about the origin of the new education policy uh, first of all it was introduced in 2015 under the committee formed by uh, the government of india and uh, the head was the ca former cabinet secretary tsr subramaniam he started the consultation process for the new education policy this name is very important this committee was formed by tsr subramaniam in the year 2015 based on the report of the committee in june 2016 17 a draft of the new education policy was submitted in 2019 and uh, when uh, the draft was submitted uh, the panel was headed by the former isro chief krishna swami kasturi ranjan this name is again very important he was the head of the panel of the draft committee you must know this uh, two names when the committee was set up it was under the head of tsr subramaniam and uh, when the draft was uh, submitted in the year 2019 the panel was led by isro former isro chief krishna swami kasturi ranjan 
the main reason of the new education policy is to induct india centric education system in the 1986 policy uh, it is uh, said in the draft that it was british centric education system now we are implementing india centric education system so it will directly contribute to uh, our national sustainability into an equitable and vibrant knowledge by providing high quality education the policy raises the emphasis on mother tongue and regional languages so medium of instruction until class 5 will be prefer uh, and preferably beyond that class also will be in the regional languages or the mother tongue but until class 5 it is compulsory and after class 5 it is optional mother tongue and regional languages has to be uh, given preference by the states the power is left in the hand of the states institutions and the schools sanskrit and foreign languages will also be given emphasis however no languages will be forcefully imposed on the students the student will be free to choose any subject so i hope uh, you are noting down the important points for your reference the names are important here what is the model of the new education system is again very important till now uh, uh, through the 1986 education system we were following 10 plus 2 structure and now it has been replaced with 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 model they may ask this question what is the new model for the new education system 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 model and now we have to understand what this model means what is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 initially we were following 10 plus 2 means you have to complete your uh, matriculation and then uh, two years for intermediate so that is 10 plus 2 now we have to follow the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 model 5 first of all i'll talk about 5 what is 5 5 is known as a foundational stage up to 5 year of age the child will be under the foundational stage from year 1 to year 5 out of which year 1 2 and 3 first 3 year of the child will be uh, known as the pre schooling or he will spend in anganwadi followed by 2 years of class 1 and class 2 in primary school. so they this may uh, cover the age from 3 to 8 years and this foundational stage will be on the activity based learning so 5 means 5 years of age out of the 5 years 3 years as a pre schooling or anganwadi and 2 years in class 1 and 2 so this is called 5 after 5 years next 3 years here it's talking about the age of the child so next 3 years the child will uh, spend in class 3 4 and 5 that is known as preparatory stage which is stages name of the stages are again very important you just note down the name of the stages foundational stages preparatory stages so 3 to 5 so it will cover around age to 8 to 11 years and it will gradually introduce subjects like speaking reading writing writing physical education languages arts science and mathematics so all these uh, subjects will be taught from class 3 to class 5 this is known as preparatory stage so 5 plus 3 is done now the next three is known as middle stage where the child will study in class 6 Seven and eight. So this is again three years. It will cover the children between age eleven to fourteen, and in the middle stage, the student will be given option to choose between science, mathematics, social science, arts, and humanities. So earlier, uh, this option was given during uh, plus two, but now it will be introduced from class six itself. the child will be able to choose the science arts commerce and uh, according to his own choice and even 
uh, there uh, there won't be any compulsion that one who is studying science subject cannot take art subject there can be a fusion of science arts commerce anything can be taken together and the last uh, stage is known as that is plus 4 this is secondary stage from 9 10 11 and 12 last four classes will be known as secondary stage covering the children age from 14 to 19 years so it is further divided into two categories class 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 so the first phase and the second phase so secondary stage will be in two phases first phase and second phase and in this four years of study uh, the student will inculcate multidisciplinary study so more than one subject a uh, student can read together coupled with depth and critical thinking and multiple options of the subject will be provided so one can take mathematics along with history and uh, along with economics so all the mixtures one can take according to his choice and interest so this is the model of the new education system 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 the stages name of the stages are important foundational stage preparatory stage middle stage and secondary stage foundational stage class 1 and 2 preparatory stage 3 4 5 middle stage 6 7 8 and secondary stage 9 10 11 12 12 12 i hope we have noted down so i'll go ahead anyone who has not noted down okay uh, now i move on to uh, the key points as i said that the new education policy has been categorized into two category one is elementary education and the second is higher education so first i will talk about the elementary education or school education so what are the uh, new things that has been introduced in the school education instead of exams that are being held nowadays every academic year but in the new education policy the students will only face exam in class 3 5 and 8 only these three exams will be there class 3 5 and 8 the secondary exams will be there but uh, up to class 10 there uh, only three exams a student has to face board exams will be continued as they are now uh, taking place for class 10 and 12 but the structure will be redesigned standards for these exams will be established by an assessment body that will be known as parak this point is very very important a new assessment body uh, is being formulated to redesign the structure of the exam of class 10 and class 12 so up to class 12 a student has to face only five exams class 3 class 5 class 8 10 and 12 the name parak is very important the new uh, assessment body that is being formulated is known as parak uh till now this exams of 10th and 12th are being conducted once in a year but in the new education policy it is recommended that these exams will be conducted twice a year like our net exam that is uh, that is being conducted twice a year similarly 10th and 12th exam will also be conducted twice a year and students will be offered two attempts to pass the exam and uh, the structure will have the two parts objective questions and descriptive questions the policy aims at reducing the curriculum load of students and allow them to be more interdisciplinary and multilingual so as i said that a student can choice any number of subjects according to his own choice one example is given in the new education policy that if a student wants to pursue fashion studies with physics or if one wants to learn bakery with chemistry that will be allowed to do so report card will be prepared in a holistic manner and uh, it will mainly 
describe about the skill of the student rather than markings till now uh, the marks of the subjects are displayed on the report card but now what skill they pursue that will be displayed on the report cards coding computer coding will be introduced from class 6 and experimental learning will be adopted so this is another important point till now the midday meal is being provided in the lunch but now it will be extended into to include breakfast also and more focus will be given to students health particularly mental health through deployment of counselors and social workers so ngos will also be involved in counseling of the students so these are the key points of the school education or the elementary education now coming to the key points of the higher education system it proposes a multidisciplinary bachelor degree in an undergraduate program and there will be multiple options this will include professional and vocational areas so professional courses and vocational courses both can be taken together till now one has to uh, take admission in graduation and until he finishes 3 years minimum he is not awarded degree but in the new education system if a student completes one year in graduation he will be provided with a certificate so uh, not even a single year will be wasted if he completes two years and he will get a diploma certificate in whatever the subject he is doing his graduation and finally at the completion of three years he will get the bachelor's degree and uh, mphil is discontinued just to match up with the model of the western countries so now uh, there won't be any mphil in any of the universities and uh, one more important thing is that uh, a digital credit transfer system has been introduced digital credit transfer means uh, if you are doing graduation from any particular university and if you want to transfer from one university or one college to other university you can transfer your credits whatever you have completed in the previous college and it will be digitally transferred you need not to carry any certificate from one college to another college so the things are going to be digitalized and uh, a very important uh, body that is being uh, formulated uh, about the higher education system instead of ugc now everything is adjusted by ugc university grant commission is the head of the body that is controlling all the universities but instead of ugc now a higher education council of india will be set up to regulate the, all the higher education so they may ask a question about the full form of heci higher education council of india and this uh, council uh, will consists of four more branches so heci will have four more branches first branch will be national higher education regulatory council nherc again the full form is important national higher education regulatory council so this will regulate higher education including teacher education and uh, medical and legal educations are excluded the next body is national accreditation council now we have naac national assessment and accreditation council so that will be replaced by national accreditation council <coughs> so this body will uh, accredit the grade of to the colleges and the universities so nac will be replaced by nac naac will be replaced by nac then we have higher education grants council this will look after the funding and financing of the university nowadays it is looked after by ugc itself but in the new education policy it will be looked after by higher education grants council this uh, will also replace the existing councils like uh, national council for teacher education all india council for teacher uh, technical education and university grant commission so all these bodies are going to be replaced and the fourth body is general education council 
this will uh, 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 work as graduate attributes that is it will decide the learning outcome from the courses so what are the learning outcomes from graduation post graduation phd etc so it will monitor the learning outcomes and it will also be responsible for framing national higher education qualification framework so it will keep on updating the education system through nheqf national higher education qualification framework and uh, earlier the national council for teacher education was an independent body now it will uh, be under general education council and this will uh, work as a professional standard setting body some other professional uh, bodies will also work as i said that uh, some of the branches were kept out so one was veterinary council this was uh, for uh, the doctors of animals so veterinary council of india will remain there council of architecture indian council of agricultural research and a national council for vocational education and training so this all will be in both nta national testing agency which is conducting the major exams of the country will now be given the additional responsibility to conduct the entrance exams for admission to universities across the country so if you want to take admission to the major universities central universities like cu set it is already conducting cu set so all the major universities entrance exams will be conducted by nta iit will inculcate the arts subjects as well indian institute of technology so nowadays uh, most of the iits are also uh, taking humanities arts and humanities as their subject so uh, it will be a diversity of learning the new policy proposes to internalize education in india and now foreign universities can now set up campuses in india oxford cambridge melbourne university will now have the campus in india so this is a, going to be a major change in the education policy and it is going to jeopardize the private education system in india the fees for private and public universities will be fixed by the body a uh, new eligibility for teachers are also introduced in the new education policy so uh, to become a teacher a four years of bachelor education will be the minimum requirement by 2030 as uh, the main theme of the new education policy that the trans, uh, indian education system will be completely transformed by the year 2030 so after 2030 uh, four years of bachelor degree education will be the minimum requirement the teacher recruitment process will be strengthened and made transparent national council for teacher education will frame the national curriculum framework for the education of teacher by uh, education by 2021 and the national professional standards for teachers by 2022 so these are the changes that are going to take place the policy aims to ensure that all students at all levels of schools education are taught by passionate motivated and highly qualified professionally trained teachers now some other major changes which i have not included in the elementary and higher education so under the new education policy numerous new educational institutes bodies and concepts have been given legislative permission uh, some of them number one is the head of the national education commission will be prime minister of india so very important point may be asked in the exam the head of the national education commission is the prime minister of india and as i said that there will be a national digital credit system so academic bank of credit this will help the student to resume the education even after a gap 
or even after the change of the university and the colleges. National Research Foundation will be formulated. This is a body for the, which will monitor the research. Doctoral and postdoctoral researches will be governed by National Research Foundation to improve research and innovation. Special education zones will be formulated. There will be different zones in the north, south, east and western sectors. So that uh, more focus, emphasized focus can be given on the education of under represented group and the disadvantaged reasons, the regions which are underdeveloped that will be also under consideration. Gender inclusion fund. This new type of uh, scholarship has been uh, introduced for female and transgender children. So they will provide this scholarship through the gender inclusion fund. They are also setting, uh, setting a forum known as National Educational Technology Forum to facilitate exchange of ideas on technology to improve the learning. So they will also uh, spend uh, money on the improvement of the technology through a forum known as National Educational Technology Forum. We are also going to form, uh, formulate institutions like Indian Institute of Translation and uh, Interpretation and the National Institutes for Pali, Persian and Prakrit. These are the languages which are uh, uh, missing from our culture. So they are going to focus on these three languages, Pali, Persian and Prakrit. Other bodies proposed uh, to include the National Mission for Mentoring. As I said that mentoring is going to be focused by uh, introducing NGOs and the counselors. They're also going to bring national book promotion policy and a national mission on fundamental literacy and numeracy. So these are the major changes which are apart from uh, the elementary and the higher education. So these were the main points that are important from exam point of view. I hope that you must have noted down.